Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I am a paediatric nurse, mum of two gorgeous girls. I'm also the author of A Life, A Finger, A Pee, Up A Nose, A Practical Guide to Baby and Child First Aid. And I'm also founder of CPR Kids. And at CPR Kids, what we do is that we empower parents and families with the life-saving skills of baby and child first aid and recognition of the sick child. And what we are talking about today on our Facebook Live, as I'm trying to talk above the wind and the storm that's happening outside where I am at the moment, so let's keep our fingers crossed that the internet connection stays, we're going to be talking about breathing problems in children, and it's particularly apt as we head into winter. Now, it may still be nice and warm where you are, but where I am at the moment, it is quite cold and it is really windy. And I think half of Sydney has uh, respiratory problems at the moment. If they're, you know, certainly if their asthma isn't playing up, then it's one of the many viruses that are going around. So what we are going to talk about today is recognising, no matter what the cause of the breathing problem is, is recognising when you need to get help for your child. And we'll have a quick discussion on some of the common respiratory illnesses in children as well, but we will be presenting uh, some other things on that soon too. Now, what I would love you to do just before we get into this, if you can tag any of your friends who you think may benefit from knowing the information that we give you today, because remember, at CPR Kids, we run lots of different classes face to face, but we know how important it is that we give you lots of good information. And that's why we do these Facebook Lives, so we can empower you to know what to do to help your child when they're sick. So tag any of your friends in the comments below so that they can get this information too. If you can't tune in live, we will be posting this and pinning it to the top of the CPR Kids page, the Facebook page, so you can watch it anywhere any time and we will be doing a summary at the end so those of you who are really time poor then we, I will do a quick summary at the end too. So let's get into it. Breathing problems in children. Now there are so many different causes. There can be viruses, there can be bacteria, child may be an asthmatic, there are other chronic conditions that can cause breathing problems, other diseases that do that too. But regardless of the cause, it's really important that you know when to seek medical help. Always trust your gut too. Remember, that's one thing that we are always saying at CPR Kids. If in doubt, if your gut says that there is something wrong with your child, always seek medical help. Trust that instinct. But I'm going to go through some signs and symptoms uh, that you need to look out for. Now, Certainly when it comes to winter, we often will see an increase in the respiratory uh, diseases. Just to bust a few myths here first, you can't catch a cold from going outside with wet hair. It's not about that. What it is, it's often people think that it's the cold weather that gives you uh, the, you know, a cold. You have to actually catch the virus or the bacteria to be able to do that. So going outside with wet hair or no shoes on, even though, you, you know, yes, you will feel cold, it's that's not going to, it's what's going to give you or your child those problems. What it is, is that often we find that in wintertime, we're in close, close proximity to each other. We are indoors more. You know, we, uh, we've got the heating on. Uh, there's all of those things where we're kind of crowding it together, sharing our germs a lot more. We're not as outdoors. We haven't flung open the windows of the house. We're all in our, somebody gets sick in the office. We're all in there, you know, school. They pass it on to each other. So it's not necessarily about the weather. It's about us being a lot closer and sharing our germs. And there are a few other things as well. But remember, you actually have to catch the virus or bacteria to get sick. So different illnesses such as bronchiolitis, pneumonia, croup, the common cold, you know, the list is endless. There are all these sorts of things that can cause breathing problems. But what do we need to look out for? If your child, for example, has just got a bit of a runny nose, they don't seem to have any trouble breathing. And how do you know they have trouble breathing or not? 
you know what is normal for your child look at them you look at them every day you know what is normal i don't know about you but when i first brought my newborn home uh, i remember watching her and just going gee they newborns really do breathe irregularly they're a bit And that's completely normal. You will know, you watch your child, you see them. If you're anything like my husband, he still goes, and my kids are nine and almost 11 now. And he still every night goes into the bedroom, checks that they're breathing. I'm like, oh, dude, come on. He used to do it when they were babies, but no, it's just the habit that he's got and he does it every single night. I don't know if you do that or if your partner does that, but it happens in our house. Um, but you know what normal is. So what is not normal? They have a bit of runny nose, but they're not, they haven't got what we call an increased work of breathing. They're not working hard to get that air in. And the reason I've got this picture up is because we're going to have a look at the baby and see the different areas of the signs that you need to look out for. Now, I hope you can see this properly. It's a little bit dark in here at the moment because with the storm and weather outside, we're having a few lighting issues, but hopefully you can still see this anyway. So one of the things that you're particularly going to look out for, particularly in a young baby, so an infant, infants are obligate nose breathers. What that means is that they, uh, they primarily breathe through their nose. If they get a cold, if their nose is blocked, they can have extreme difficulty breathing. You may notice the first thing is they can't feed properly. You may notice that they're trying to latch on to the bottle or the breast and they're just able to have a few sucks and then they just can't do it. They get distressed. They may be snuffly. They can't blow or pick their nose like we can. So what you may see is that drop off of feeding. They just can't feed properly because of this. You may also notice that their nostrils start to flare. They're trying to open up their nasal passages to try and get more airway in. So you may notice that as well. A good thing that you can do if your little one has got a blocked nose, they've got a bit of snot in there, is that you can just put some saline drops or a saline spray just available at your local pharmacy to help clear that out. Just follow the directions on the, um, on the packet or from the pharmacist or your doctor and make sure that you're getting those directions. And it can just help thin out that snot. They end up swallowing it, helps clear out their, you know, nasal passages and then they're able to feed better so that's a really good thing that you can do so you may notice that they are starting to have that nasal flaring that's a concerning sign other things you may notice too you may see just here in their neck and you can see on me yeah i'm not in any respiratory distress so it's a little bit harder to make that suck in but that little notch just there when they're breathing and sometimes you know when your child laughs you may see that suck in but if they're unwell and you start to notice that they are really sucking in at their neck when they're trying to breathe that is a concerning sign that they need medical help another concerning sign in babies particularly quite young ones is that when they're trying to breathe that they start to bob their head up and down so that we call this head bobbing. That means that they are having a lot of difficulty breathing. That is a very concerning sign. So what we've looked at so far, we've talked about the nasal flaring, the head bobbing, and the sucking in at the neck. You may notice that they start to breathe faster than normal. Now, you'll know if you've got little ones that they breathe faster than us grown-ups anyway. So certainly a grown-up might breathe between maybe 12 to 18 times in a minute. You know, it varies, depends, you know, you know what, norm, what normal is for you. But what's normal for your child? So certainly a newborn, you may see them breathing around 40 times a minute. Don't hang on to that number. You know what's normal for your child. You don't need to count it. It just looks different. You'll notice if they are breathing faster. So you notice that they're really kind of, breathing faster than normal. What I want you to do 
is take off their clothes. I want you to look at their chest if you think that they are having breathing difficulties. This is important. You want to be able to have a look at them. So take their top off. What you might see is you might see just around here so that you see where their ribs kind of meet their tummy, that it starts to suck in just here. So it's almost like it like this. And trust me, you would recognize it in a second if it was happening because it is very different to normal. So you might see them sucking in around here, around the tummy. You might also notice that they start to suck in between the ribs as well. So, you know, your child might have a nice, beautiful layer of you know insulation around there you may not be able to see it but in some kids you can really see that almost that sucking in between the ribs just around here that like this and the tummy going in and out almost looks a little bit you know like a almost like a seesaw a little bit just like that so they'll be sucking in here they'll be having the sucking in around the tummy and possibly with their ribs you may notice that they're in a baby that their that their nostrils are flaring. Um, certainly, if they are head bobbing, that is really concerning. It really is. So, is it something simple where they just need a little bit of saline up their nose and then they're feeling fine again? If it's this stuff, they need medical help. If your child is having severe difficulty breathing, you must call emergency services immediately. Here in Australia, it is triple zero. You ask for an ambulance. Know the number wherever you are in the world to be able to call an ambulance if your child is having difficulty breathing. It's a really important thing because kids don't have the reserves that grown-ups do. They get tired quickly. And there are lots and lots of different causes. Um, you may have noticed that I haven't talked about sounds yet. What do they sound like? Well, it depends on what's wrong with them, but you don't need to diagnose that. You just need to know, is it normal or not? For example, if they have croup, they might have that barking cough, that sound like a seal, like that. <coughs> you may notice that, you know, while they're breathing in, they're, uh, I can't even mimic, mimic it properly. It's called a strider, but they have this really odd sound when they're breathing in. Or, you know, if they have bronchiolitis or something like that, they might have a wheeze. You might be able to hear that. But there are lots of different things that cause those sounds. You don't need to diagnose that. You just need to listen and hear that it is different to normal. That's all. So... Let's go through this one more time. When do you need to be concerned? When do you need to seek medical help? They're not able to feed properly. You notice that they, and remember, this isn't every single one of these signs. It may be just one or two, but trust your gut, you will know. They may have that nasal flaring. Certainly an infant, that head bobbing is really concerning. You may notice that they have that tug just here, that sucking in at the neck. You may notice that they have between the ribs here sucking in and especially that sucking in around the tummy here. They have that fast breathing rate. You may notice that they start to become pale and especially if they start to become blue, that is a medical emergency triple zero. If your child has got severe difficulty breathing, please, immediate medical help triple zero ambulance if you're in Australia or wherever you are you need to know the number for emergency services so do you have any questions guys please what I want you to do while we're live on now if you would like to type in below any questions that you have certainly Jenny has just commented that her little one is just going through a lung infection at the moment I'm so sorry to hear that Jenny um, this yet yeah, this is good timing you're most welcome but remember there are certainly lots and lots of different uh, reasons why your child may have breathing problems remember you don't need to diagnose what that is that's up to the doctors to do that you just need to recognize when they need to get medical help and even if they didn't have all these signs and symptoms even if you thought to yourself you know what something's just not right here you know, uh, they're definitely unwell. 
make an appointment, go to your GP. What I'm talking about here is emergency. They need to be seen quite quickly. That's emergency department stuff here. If they're not quite as sick as this, if you're thinking, you know what, but something is wrong here, please see your doctor. Now, Jess has asked, what is the eye sign from the picture? Um, it's not actually next to the eye. I'm sorry you can't quite see the writing in this. I couldn't quite make it big enough. I'm not uh, you're quite technical enough to be able to do that. All it says is abnormal skin colour. So what we talked about before, so just thinking about the baby's skin, is that uh, they might be pale. You know, certainly if they are blue or mottled, that is, and that's different to normal because some babies are just generally mottled. Um, what I mean by mottled is that kind of that, um, you know, when you go outside on a really cold day and you get all kind of spotchy and marbly. Um, if that is not normal for your child or if they are blue, that is triple zero ambulance immediately. Now, Jenny has also said, any tips on getting them to take their antibiotics when it's becoming a battle? Jenny, that is the million dollar question. <laughs> yes, some kids, are impossible to get medicine into. Um, you know, certainly as a nurse, um, uh, you know, it was it was never, it's, it's not negotiable. You have to take your medicine. That's it. And that's certainly, as a nurse, the stance that we've always taken, um, that it's not negotiable. You have to have that. But how do you do that with a one-year-old? You can't, you know, you can't. It's really, really hard. Um, I've got a mannequin here with me at the moment and I can show you some little tips and tricks. Some things that you can do, speak with your pharmacist with the medicine. There might be a better tasting brand. It may be a type of medicine that you could mix in with a spoonful of yogurt. We don't recommend putting it in like a full bottle because what happens if they don't drink the full bottle? They need to be able to have the full dose and some medicines can't be mixed with certain foods or with foods at all. So it's a good idea to speak with your pharmacist about whether you can do you know things like that. Um, that's a good thing. Certainly, um, we always used to joke in the hospital that if they can fight you, then when they're giving you the medicine, that's a good thing because they've got a bit of energy as well. Um, but not good when you're at home and you've got to get their antibiotics into them. Definitely not. So I've got my, um, who have I got here? He doesn't have a name. We're going to call him George. Okay, I'm just going to move around a little bit here so I can get in front of you a little bit. So George here, imagine he's about three. So what were... Actually, it doesn't really matter what age. But there are some things that you can do. You can tuck their arm around your back so their arm is stuck behind you. You can then be able to put your leg over the top of their leg so they're kind of, you know, not restrained in a way that they're feeling terrible, but you can also, this guy doesn't have arms. It makes it a little bit difficult. But you can also hold their hand with this hand. And you can sing to them. You can just make them feel a bit comfortable and have it in a syringe. Um, a syringe is a really good idea rather, I mean, but you know what? You may be able to put that on a spoon and your child takes it straight away. Always measure it with a syringe first. You may find that they hate the syringe, but they're very happy to take it off a spoon or out of a big boy cup or something like that. It's worth trying these things. But with the syringe, just a little squeeze into the side down here minuscule amount so that it can't be spat back at you. Then once again, minuscule amount. This could take 10 minutes, um, but it's about going, you know what, It's it has to be done. It, it just does. And you know what, there are kids out there who I have, you know, certainly when I was working in the emergency department, how I go, you know, you'd feel like you'd had a round with Mike Tyson afterwards because, not, not because they were physically, you know, at you but because it was so draining to be able to try and get their medicine in so trying to actually get that in and another good trick if you've got a little baby is that or if they've got a dummy you can have the dummy in while they're sucking just slip it in down the side of the dummy um, that's another good trick to do as well and you know sometimes being able to just if it's possible and check with your pharmacist first, being able to mix it in just that little spoonful of yogurt. Or if you've got an older child, the whole reward system. I know that there's a lot of parenting stuff out there that says that, you know, the reward system is no good. 
sometimes when it comes to medicine, you just got to do what you got to do to get it into your child. So if anybody else has any fabulous hints and tips out there, um, certainly I've never used this, but I've seen a dummy which has got a syringe on the end that you can just squeeze it in and actually suck it through the dummy. I don't know about that. I've never used it. I can't comment. Perhaps somebody else would like to comment on that. That's up to you. Um, but certainly the hold that makes them feel secure without making them feel restrained is tucking that arm underneath you, holding their hand with this hand, snuggling them into your body, their head, because it's right up against your shoulder, it just feels like a lovely big cuddle. It's what we don't want to do is really restrain and pin down our kids. There's a risk of choking with that as well when we give them this. So that's why holding them in this lovely secure way that just feels like a lovely big cuddle can often be a better way of doing this. So it's, you know, it's minimizing the moving without restraining them, you know, badly. So that's a good thing. Now, I hope that has been a little bit helpful. Now, does anybody else have any questions? Well, we've got a few here. Okay. Rebecca says that her daughter had croup. She had the croup here and went pale and started shaking. Do I think that's due to lack of oxygen? Um, it could be anything. It could be that she had a fever at the time. But the key here is, is that that's not normal. And if that look, if you went, my goodness, that's really worrying, then that's something that definitely you need medical help for. Definitely. And Madison has said a four-year-old has a severe asthma cough. Sometimes Ventolin helps, but sometimes his cough just won't stop. Um, when is the point to seek help? When it's really different from normal. So the point to seek help is this cough is not stopping. Certainly if he is showing any of these other signs as well, that's, you know, emergency. But if it's cough, 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 but he's certainly getting air in okay, then, and it, but it's different to normal, then you need to go and see your doctor. So um, you are most welcome, everyone. I hope that has been helpful. And so please remember too, that if your child has got any special medical conditions that speak to your doctor, you know what may be very different for your child as well. So it's always, you know, it's different for different kids, but this is the general thing of what to look out for. So I'll stop cuddling my mannequin here. I'll move over, we'll do the quick summary. Oh, here we go. So remembering when is it an emergency? When do we need to seek emergency medical help? Number one, nasal flaring for a baby. You notice that head bobbing, that is really, really concerning. They've changed color, they've got that blue, they might be mottled, that is also very concerning, unless mottled is normal for your child. You notice that they have a faster breathing rate than normal. They are sucking in here at the neck. They are sucking here around the tummy, in between the ribs. Your gut says that something is wrong. You need immediate medical help. In a baby, they are not feeding. Even with a bit of saline to clear their nose, they're distressed, they're not feeding well. And then when they start to become pale, floppy, tired, difficult to rouse, triple zero immediately ambulance, okay? So remember, there's lots of different causes. Now, what I would like to ask you guys to do is, what would you like us to talk about next? Would you like us to go into some specific conditions like croup or bronchiolitis? Um, if you would like that, please type in the comments down below what you would like us to do for our next Facebook Live. And there's one more thing before you go, and that is it is National Burns Awareness Month because there is always an increase in burns in winter, always. And so, you know, we've got the heaters on, we've got hot soups, hot drinks around, and particularly in the zero to four-year-old age group, we do see an increased amount of burn injuries. So KidSafe has announced that it's National Burns Awareness Month, and we want everybody to know what to do in an emergency. So um, we would just love to offer you uh, a discount off our classes because our mission is to empower 
every parent and carer with the life-saving skills of baby and child first aid. We do these Facebook Lives because we want you to have this information, but we also want you to come and do a first aid course because it is so important. So winter 20 is the code for a 20% discount off all of our classes. This is just until June the 9th, so booking a class now. Um, it's terrible weather outside. What better time to come in with a group of mates to one of our classes? And if we're not near you, we're going to help you find a class that is because no matter where you are, it is so important to have these skills. So thank you so much, everyone. It has been an absolute pleasure. Remember, comments below. What would you like us um, to bring you next on our Facebook Lives? Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye.